Right. So we we have seen Pika Pika from the early stages. Now we are on the second part of Pika Pika. And uh, so you're dealing with a part that is always moving, right? To that, we're going to add basses. I find that the easiest way to negotiate the playing the basses is to actually, in the first instance, in the first sequence, you want to keep your one finger on ninth position, right? Karate chop position, you're in ninth on the D string, right? So, E bass together with four, two, then you have to climb three up to the fifth string, you're playing a G sharp, again four, and then your bass goes down to the D string, and you pinch that together with the D on the first string, then open. So, starting again, open E, Make sure you alternate those. Three climbs up to the fifth string. Four downstairs. Two downstairs together with D string. Open again and again. E bass. Three up to the fifth strings. Four. Two downstairs with uh, D bass. Now notice where D bass is. Okay, that's your ninth fret. Right next to it, you're going to put your third finger on the third, third fret, same string, right? And two is going to go downstairs to the G string, right? So you have C and you have E. Four is going to be on the same tenth fret on the D on the first string, and you're going to play that with your fifth string. Now, for this part, it's very easy to keep these two together. Something about playing with four and two and having three all the way up here makes it very difficult to hold that in place. I prefer to do this and come up when I need it. But for this one, it's really a good idea to keep those two locked in place as you start. A bass together with this one. Remember that for this one you had E bass in the bottom, now it's going to be A bass. And it's going to be the same formula, right? First is four with bass, one, as you play the open E comes your second bass. So you move from the fifth string down to the fourth string. Four, then open with bass, four, and then one comes, don't forget, this time you come and you do your bass on the G string, four, with A bass, one, D string and open, four, and then G string and one, All right, so we'll put them back together. over to sixth position and here you're not going to use your pinky the pattern is going to go off three and two on the first string and you're going to use your index finger over here on the D string you're playing a G sharp there on the sixth fret so E bass and then D string with open uh, E and then one comes around to the seventh fret and plays together with two on the first string and 7th fret, 3rd string for 1. Come around. Right, so here you're going from the 6th fret to the 7th fret. So again. Quite an active first finger. Right? And then you find yourself in 4th position. But it's kind of not really a 4th position because 1 is going to be coming over to the G string and then the B string. One comes around over to the C on the third string, fifth fret. And then downstairs to the B string. Now, as you're practicing this slowly, you're gonna feel tempted to do a chuck, basically use two fingers to play on your right hand to do that. Don't give in to that temptation because it's almost like running and uh, it, let's just say that you're using both feet and all of a sudden you decide to walk on your hands. You're going to fall over, right? So it's a completely different technique. You don't want to insert that. Make sure that you're playing with your thumb. Fifth string, third string, second string with your thumb. 
Watch my right hand. Can you focus on the right hand? Right? The next one is even easier. You do kind of the same thing, but on second position, right? And the first time your index, remember when we were over here, your index had to jump back and forth? Here it jumps on the same fret. Over here, it's going to be only on the second fret. Why? Because the third string is going to be open, right? So it's the same pattern almost as you're here. Open G. is A. I am not positive I would have to look back with the score. I'm working from memory here. But it's not a big uh, deal to just change the first bass, right? From fifth string to E string, right? So I could be... Which to my ear sounds wrong. So you have A bass. Right? And then in first position you're tucking in four. Right? Three directly stacked on top of it and two for the G string second fret chuck the G and B string get rid of four tuck one underneath two on the second fret right and then tuck it out to the first D bass and it's a triple chuck so right again D bass and and your ring finger hooks the first ring chuck Tuck in the one, tuck out, triple chuck. And then, just like before, at the uh, first ending, on uh, we have a D minor chord, right? So four is on the B string, third fret. Three on the D string, also third fret, grabbing the F. And two, grabbing the A on the G string, second fret. Go ahead and grab your first fret, sixth string. I don't know if you can notice from that angle that I am not holding a bar. So, triple chuck on the inside strings, B, G, and D and bass on the 6th string. Close your hinge. Grab the 1st string. Open your hinge. 4 is where you want it. Then 2 with A bass like before. But we're not going to do that 2-1-2 two, two business, right? This time we're going to go right over to the 1st string. And the A bass, hammer with four on the fifth string, your thumb comes down to the fourth string, right? D, G, B, E, thumb, index, middle, ring, make a bar on the fifth fret, triple chuck on the first three strings, A bass. That is the whole song. <laughs> 